Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to get started with the ASP Now protocol from uh, Espressif to send data between two ASP32 devices. Uh, we are going to be using two different boards. In my case, I'm using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from the Afrobot as sender and the ASP32 Beetle board uh, also from the Afrobot as receiver. So in this simple tutorial, to get started, we are going to send an arbitrary integer value from one device to another. So, getting started with the code, and during the code we are going to talk a bit about uh, some particularities of the protocol, uh, but getting started with the code, the first thing we are going to do is including this ASP underscore now.h library. Uh, basically, this is a lower level library from IDF. IDF is the official development framework for the ASP32, and basically the Arduino core is built on top of it. Uh, even though we are using the Arduino core, we can access these lower level uh, functionalities from IDF um, and some of them are not exposed in, in nice wrappers, object-oriented wrappers on the Arduino core and the ASP now uh, is such example. This is why we are need uh, to be resorting to these lower level primitives. Other than that, we are going to need the Wi-Fi .edge library. This will be used to initialize the Wi-Fi interface because uh, the SPNL protocol uh, works with uh, with the Wi-Fi interface. And even though we could have used also lower level libraries to, to initialize uh, the Wi-Fi interface, when uh, higher level one is available in the Arduino core, I prefer to use it because it tends to be simpler. Uh, so in this case, there's no reason for us uh, to not use the Wi-Fi.edge library for this initial part, which will lead to a, a bit simpler code. So after that, we are going to define here an array of six uh, bytes containing uh, the broadcast address. Basically, the SPNL works both with unicast and multicast, but for this introductory tutorial, uh, we are going to work with uh, with broadcast. We are going to broadcast our message, so we don't need to to know beforehand what is the MAC address of our peers. Um, for this simple tutorial, it's easier to do that. Uh, basically, in, in if we wanted, we could uh, specify the address of the peer that we want to connect to and do uh, unicast communication. But as I said here, we are going to keep things simple. Uh, followed by that, we are going to do the rest of the code uh, in our setup function. Uh, obviously, we could send the message periodically or wherever suited our application in a real case scenario. But here, for illustration purposes, we are going to run the um, we are going to run the code to send the message here um, in the Arduino setup. Um, and basically, this is to keep things simple. As usual, we are going to start by um, we're going to start by opening a serial connection so we can output the results of our program. And then after that, we are going to uh, initialize the um, Wi-Fi interface of our sender. Sorry, I forgot to mention this is the sender code, obviously. Um, but basically, we are going to, to initialize um, the Wi-Fi interface to station mode. So both the sender and the receiver will need to work in station mode. And this is done with the call to this mode method uh, on the Wi-Fi external variable that we have worked with it before in countless other tutorials. Basically, this is the uh, external variable that becomes available once we include the Wi-Fi.edge library and we interact with it to a lot of stuff like connecting to Wi-Fi, setting the operation mode, getting the, the MAC address, the IP address. Uh, so it's, it's a variable that we know uh, from other tutorials. But getting back to the code, so basically we do this, we initialize the, the, um, the Wi-Fi interface in station mode and under the hood this basically implicit will, will initialize the Wi-Fi interface and we need to have th this interface initialized before we start to work with uh, the SPNL protocol. After that, we are going to print the MAC address of the sender because on the receiver we will have access to the uh, MAC address of uh, whoever sent the message so we can then compare if both addresses match and it is expected that both match and this is done obtaining the MAC address of a SP32 device is done with a call to the MAC address method also uh, called this method is called on our Wi-Fi external variable. After this, 
uh, we are going to start working with a lower level primitive. So uh, to initialize ASP now, we call this ASP underscore now underscore init function. Just to note, all the um, all the functions from IDF are a bit verbose in terms of naming, um, but we clearly understand what we are doing here. So we call this ASP underscore now underscore init function without passing any parameters, and we check if the return value is ASP underscore OK. If so, everything went fine and we can proceed. If not, it means that it failed initializing ASP now. We are printing this message to the user so he knows that something went wrong and then we finish the call because there's no point uh, in trying to continue because uh, the rest of the procedure won't work. After that, uh, we need to do what in terms of, of nomenclature from IDF uh, and from this library, we need to register uh, the peers to which we want to send messages. Um, basically, even though we are going to broadcast a message, we are going to need to have a peer representing uh, the broadcast address. Uh, and basically, this is done first by filling this, um, this tract called ASP underscore now underscore peer underscore info underscore T. Uh, I've called the variable peer info. Uh, basically, you need to fill some parameters of this struct and then we need to add the peer to register this peer. Uh, so the first thing we need to do uh, is filling this peer underscore address field uh, with the address of our peer. And in our case, we are going to use the broadcast address that we have defined at the beginning. Uh, since we are using the mem copy function, basically we need to specify that we are, uh, um, uh, we are uh, basically copying six bytes uh, from this um, from this variable here to our um, attribute, to our struct attribute. And basically, uh, after that, we also need to fill this attribute called channel. We are not going to enter in much detail here, but basically it's the channel over which, the Wi-Fi channel over which the devices are going to communicate. We are going to use the value zero here. Uh, and also to keep things simple, uh, basically there's this attribute called encrypt, which indicates if the communication is encrypted or not. Uh, basically, we are not going to use encrypted communication for the sake of simplicity, so we are going to set this attribute to false. After having this uh, struct field with all the, the its data members, basically, we are now going to uh, call this function called ASP underscore now underscore add underscore peer. Uh, this function is used to register our peer. Obviously, you could register uh, more peers. Uh, if we add more more um, devices to which we want to communicate to, but for our simple example, our peer will only correspond to the broadcast uh, address. Then we pass as input the address of our struct, and again we check if the procedure was successful by comparing it with the value ASP underscore OK. If everything uh, went well, then we keep with the code. If something went wrong, we print this message saying that something failed while adding the peer, and then we return because again there's no point in keeping uh, our code if uh, in executing the rest of the code if this procedure failed. After that, we are going to define here an arbitrary integer, this value here. Uh, basically, it will correspond to our message uh, for this simple use case. In more complex scenarios, we could, for example, to send more structured data, we could define uh, a struct, a C struct, and send that struct. But for this introductory tutorial, we are going to stick with a simple integer um, just for illustration purposes and to confirm that we received the message on the other side. Then to send the actual data, what we need to do is calling this ASP underscore uh, now underscore send function. Um, it receives three, three inputs. Basically, it receives the address of the peer that we want to, to reach. Note that we actually send the address, so basically the address that we have defined here, uh, and not any pointer to the peer uh, to the peer struct. Basically, it's just the address, but the peer needs to be registered beforehand. Otherwise, this won't work. So, as first input, we send the address of our peer. As second input, we send a pointer to our data. Um, we sorry, we send the address of our data, but basically we need to uh, we need to cast it uh, to a pointer. Uh, 
to an array of bytes because basically, uh, as I've said, we could be working with integers, uh, integers with structs, etc., with a lot of data structs. Uh, but basically, for this function to 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 work generically, uh, basically it interprets everything as an array of bytes. Uh, obviously, even though we are doing this cast, everything will uh, work well because on the receiver side we will also receive an array of bytes, a pointer to an array of bytes. But then we are going to convert it to the correct data, data type and interpret it as such, and thus we are going to be able to correctly interpret the data. Naturally, sorry, this here is wrong. Naturally, um, uh, since we are working with uh, uh, since we are working with a, um, a generic uh, array of bytes, we need to indicate the size of our data, and basically we need to uh, we need to indicate that we are sending an integer. So the expected here is the size of an integer, uh, so the system knows how many bytes to copy uh, from the the address that we are passing. After that, we are going to store the result of this operation in a variable, and we are going to the error checking here. If everything went well, we are going to print a message saying that uh, sending the data was successful. Uh, if something missed, we are going to send here a message saying that there was an error sending the data. Now I'm going to upload here the codes, and then we are going to jump. Uh, we are going to jump to the code uh, of the of the receiver uh, while this code uploads. So basically, in terms of um, in terms of includes, we are, we do the same. We include the SP underscore now library and the Wi-Fi dot edge library. Uh, then we are going to to skip here the declaration of this function. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, then basically here in the setup function, we'll uh, take care of. And the first thing, as usual, is to take care of opening a serial connection, so we'll be able to output the results of our program. And like we did on the sender, we are going to initialize here um, the Wi-Fi interface, also to station mode, like before. And implicitly, this will in, this will uh, initialize the, the, all the Wi-Fi um, the Wi-Fi interface under the hood. And after that, we can start working with the ASP now layer. Like we did on the sender, in the receiver we also need to initialize the ASP now with a call to the ASP underscore now underscore init function. And then again we are going to do an error checking and printing a message in case something went wrong uh, and returning because there's no point in continuing if this procedure has failed. Um, if everything goes well, we are going to call this function here, ASP underscore now underscore register underscore res v underscore cb. This function basically allows us to uh, register a callback function that will be executed every time a message is received. We are going to call this uh, function on receive data. We can call it wherever we want, but please keep in consideration that it needs to receive uh, to respect a predefined signature. Basically, this is the, the function that we have skipped a while ago. So basically, in terms of signature, it needs to return void. As first uh, parameter, it, re it receives a pointer to um, to array of bytes that contains the MAC address uh, of the the device that sent the message. Then a second uh, input it receives another point and another pointer to uh, an array of bytes that contains the data. And finally here it contains an integer with the length of the data. So we can now imagine that we are uh, interpreting everything as a, as an array of integers. Uh, so we know when to stop printing. Uh, the data. In our case, the, the procedure will be slightly different because we are simply working with an integer, so you just need to cast uh, the correct data types, but we'll get there in a minute. So in terms of, uh, of implementation of this function, the first thing we are going to do is printing the MAC address uh, of the sender, like we said in the beginning of the, when we were analyzing the sender code, and we'll see here if the MAC address of this device uh, matches the one that we have received. Basically, we know that the MAC address has a fixed size of uh, a 6 bytes, so we are going to iterate um, each element of the MAC address array, and we are going to print it in the hexadecimal format and separate it by columns, which is pretty much the standard way of representing a MAC address. After that, uh, what we are going to do is to uh, basically to get the data we have received, but we need to cast it to the correct data type. As I was saying, we have received here a pointer to an array of bytes, but basically we know this is the generic type used to uh, to pass the data from one side to another. Everything is treated as bytes, but we know that actually uh, what we have received in terms of payload is an integer. 
So the first thing we are going to do is cast this pointer here to a pointer uh, to a pointer to an integer, okay? So instead of having a pointer uh, to an array of bytes, we will have a pointer to an integer. After that, we are going to print the value, um, the value pointed by this pointer, okay? So we obtain here a pointer to an integer. Here with the difference operator, we obtain the value pointed by it. We should correspond to the number that we have sent uh, from the sender, which pretty much is our message. So I've already uploaded the code from for of my sender. As you can see here, uh, we have sorry of the receiver. As you can see here from previous tests, I already had here a MAC address and uh, and the message. Now I'm going to go here uh, to the code of my sender. Uh, sorry, to the serial, uh, serial monitor um, with the output of the code of my sender. Basically, as you can see here, let me put both side by side. So as you can see here. Uh, this is the MAC address of our sender, which matches the MAC address that we got on the receiver. We get the message here sent with success, uh, which means that the receiver uh, received the message. And basically, we have here the value that we have specified in the sender code. I've reset it once more, so as you can see here, um, the, the, basically it sent the message again, and our receiver, as expected, received the new message. Just to go back, this is exactly the value that we have sent um, and we have defined in our code. Uh, and even though we have converted to an array of bytes on the sender, on the receiver we were able to receive those, those bytes and to uh, cast them to the correct data type, to interpret the message correctly and to print it in the serial uh, port. Let me just leave a note, I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video, but basically we are using here the Arduino core um, so we need two instances of the Arduino EDA if you want to have uh, two serial monitors opened at the same time. So you just need to run uh, the Arduino core twice, uh, upload the code for each individual device, and then you can open the, don't forget that in each instance, you need to point to the correct uh, serial port of each of your sender and receiver, and then you can open the serial monitor and have your um, the sender and the receiver output side by side, and you can see I'm going to reset again uh, my my sender. It reset. It printed the MAC address as expected. The message saying it sent with success, and from the receiver side. Uh, we have here the message. Let me also give a note that the maximum number of bytes that the payload of these uh, SPNOW messages can have is 250 bytes. So it's a limitation um, in, the, in the number of bytes we can send with this protocol. But keep in mind that for the Internet of Things, um, it's a reasonable value. If, imagine that we want to pass uh, uh, measurements from a couple of sensors, it should be more than enough. And obviously if we need more, we can create some type of, of abstraction on top of this protocol that allows us to send a bigger message. Obviously we need to evaluate if in that case this is the adequate protocol or if we should go to, to, to other approach. Anyway, I believe that 250 bytes is a very reasonable value uh, for a protocol that doesn't require to have an access point. It can, it can, uh, uh, it allows these these devices to communicate um, peer to peer, which is very useful without having additional infrastructure. So it's very useful, and I believe it's it's a protocol worth exploring. So this is it, a very simple uh, introductory tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.